Welcome to the ISO Show, dispelling myths and sharing tips for success to improve your business with ISO standards with your host, Mel Blackmore. If you're listening to this podcast, then you're in great company. We've got thousands of listeners who have a thirst for continued improvement and raising standards in business. Whether your interest is in quality, sustainability, or risk standards, I'd love to welcome you as a member to our online platform for all things ISO, the Isology Hub. The Isology Hub is the leading place to get access to all of your online resources, from in-depth training courses, through to our very popular coffee break training, to templates and action plans and many other resources to help raise standards. As a member, you get access to over 100 courses, taking you from learner to practitioner to leader. The Isology Hub has all the resources that you need, which will really help to make your life easier and to help improve compliance in those business critical areas. So if you'd like access to learning and compliance resources ranging from data privacy to environmental management, anti-bribery, business continuity, quality, health and safety, to name just but a few, the list is endless actually, then we'd love you to come and join us. Just head over to the isologyhub.com. Hello and welcome to the ISO show. Today I'm here with our guest Lauren Taylor, who is the Manager of Information Security, Governance, Risk and Compliance at Lifelong Learner Holdings, LLC. Lifelong Learner and its brands represent a fusion of comprehensive workforce solutions with a human first focus on changing lives through assessment. This includes helping people advance in educational and career aspirations earning or maintaining licensing or certifications, or providing the tools to develop future leaders. Now, Lauren has helped Lifelong Learner accomplish a massive milestone, and that's the implementation of the Business Continuity Standard ISO 22301 across an international organisation, which is managed to do in just four months. So it was actually one of my colleagues, Rachel Churchman, who's a technical director here at Blackmores, who recommended that we get Lauren onto the podcast because it was an awesome project and Rachel really enjoyed working alongside her. So we just wanted to make sure that we could share that journey and and how Lauren achieved what she achieved in such a short period of time. So without further ado, welcome Lauren. Hi Mal, thank you for having me. Great. No, thanks very much for joining us. I know that you are in the in between stage one and stage two assessment. So um, obviously we appreciate this is this is going to be focused on the actual implementation of the standard ISO 22301 and you know the, the stage so far that you've got to in, in terms of completing the first stage of the assessment. Mm-hmm. Now before we begin, uh, do you mind just telling me something about you that not many people know? Sure. Obviously, I do information security as a living, but in a previous life, I was actually training to be a mental health counsellor. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And obviously, I I explained a little bit about what Lifelong Learner does, but I mean, could you expand on that in terms of just giving me a bit of an overview on what the company does? Yeah, sure. So LLH is the parent company of two subsidiaries. Um, we have PSI Testing Excellence and we have Talogy. PSI focus more around the certification side of things. There's a lot of real estate certifications that we do. We've got a lot of high profile clients. And Talogy, they manage the talent management side of the business. So um, what they'll do is they'll put together psychometric tests um, that help companies find the right person for the job if they're hiring or if they want to develop people. And then LLH is, supports them in that capacity by providing sort of corporate services such as legal, IT, 
compliance and finance. Right. Okay. Now, I know that you already have a number of standards in place at Lifelong Learner Holdings, uh, which is ISO 9001 for quality, 14001 for environmental management and 27001. Mm -hmm. What was the main driver behind achieving 22301? The main driver is with most companies is usually a client contractual requirement, but um, business continuity has been something that we've wanted to look further into for a while, just because there's elements of the 2-7 that cover the business continuity. While we were able to get through the audits with what we had, we just felt that it just needed a little bit more building out, if that makes sense. Yeah, sure. And I know that obviously... Business continuity is part of 27,001, but I think a lot of organisations do find that it's more at a high level, really, as a requirement in 27,001. And for those that would like to demonstrate real assurance to stakeholders, then 22301 is the next step up, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So could you just kind of walk us through, you know, from the beginning to the end to where we're at now obviously we're just the final stage of the assessment and in terms of that time frame what did that look like for you? Yeah sure so yes we started in about October 2023 Uh, we began with the context workshop where we could kind of get a better idea of, of the scope of the management system after which then we did a couple of workshops with all the teams uh, and we did some SWOT and PESO analysis just to kind of understand at the very beginning, what the known risks were, or we thought the risks would be. After which we did the BIAs, um, which actually is is a hugely important part of the business continuity management system. Sorry sorry to interrupt you there for a second, Lauren. For those listeners that don't know what a BIA is, do you want to explain what that is and the purpose of it? Sure, sorry, yes. So uh, a BIA is a business impact analysis. So essentially, what you're needing to find out from these workshops is is the activities, the core activities that each of the teams perform on a day-to-day basis. You also need to understand what their systems are that they use, if they have any dependencies. And, And essentially, it all comes down to understanding that if the business cannot perform those activities, what would be the impact over time if those activities were to stop? And after you've got all of that information, you can then map it across into a risk assessment and you can really understand the granular risks to your business when it comes to BCP. So we did all of that in the lead up to Christmas. We then were able, because of the BIAs, once we'd mapped them into a risk assessment, we saw our riskiest areas, which actually was quite surprising because we thought we had a good idea of, of our weaknesses, but until we actually perform the BIAs and map them into the risk assessment, we really didn't understand our gap areas. So we were able then to obviously log the risks in our register and begin creating or revamping the existing documentation that we had to meet the requirements of the standard. Luckily, because we already had the other ISOs, some of the clauses within the standard were already met. So we already had our management reviews. We already had our internal audits. We already had a system for tracking any non-conformities. So for those areas, it was more just a case of integrating the 2-2 into those existing work streams. And then, yeah, once we had all the documentation, uh, we conducted a, a ransomware test exercise, uh, which we also documented all the findings from. And, uh, and obviously had all the documentation, then we were, we were ready for stage one. Great. Okay. Sounds like you've been on quite a journey then over the last few months. Mm. But it sounds as though that BIA was instrumental in understanding, you know, really what, where you could provide enhancements to the existing systems that you had for business continuity. Yeah. And in terms of, you mentioned about the gaps. Obviously, we don't need to go into any specific details, but if you could just give me a general overview on, you know, a few aha moments for you in terms of where those biggest gaps were. Yeah, so I think that was um, definitely after the BIAs and and when we mapped them into the risk assessment, we were able to see where we needed response plans because business continuity is always your plan B. So in our minds, we had an idea of what kind of response plans we would need in terms of like a malware response plan, 
a ransomware response plan, those sorts of things. But until we actually looked at the BIA, we realized that we needed we needed a few more just in case. Yeah, I think that a lot of people still associate business continuity with IT when actually it's it's much wider than that, isn't it? Yeah. It does cover literally every aspect of the organization. Mm, definitely. Yeah. So and what difference do you think it, it made then in terms of you know, bridging those gaps? For us, it was understanding the real risks to our business. Because in your mind, uh, especially if you've got a 2-7, you have this idea of, you know, if, if another pandemic happened, that you would be well prepared. But actually, it wasn't until we'd identified these risks that we realised that there were, there were areas that we could improve on that would really help with ensuring business continuity in in the event of a disaster so I think for us that was the big uh, bridging of the gap was the risks okay great are you new to ISO standards and want to know what it's all about or maybe your company has multiple ISO standards but there's a lack of engagement and compliance Whether it's quality, sustainability or risk standards, the Isology Hub is your one-stop shop for all your online learning resources associated with raising your company's standards. From as little as £99 a month, you can have unlimited access to hundreds of online training courses and achieve certification for completion of courses along the way, which will take you from learner to practitioner to leader in no time. So what courses are in the Hub? Well, there are courses on everything ahead of quality, sustainability, information, security and health and safety would need to manage compliance and raise standards. With over 100 courses available to you, here are examples of just a few. ISO 9001 Internal Auditor, How to Transition to the New ISO 27001 Standard, The Role of ESG in Quality Management and How to Integrate Management Systems. But it's not just courses in the Isology Hub. You can access templates, downloads and action checklists to take your business to the next level. So why not try the Isology Hub today? Just click on the link at www.isologyhub.com and you'll get access to all our resources within minutes. If you're interested in embedding best practice across your organisation or would like to develop an awareness and training programme for employees, we offer a free learning and development session to tailor a bespoke training programme based on your organisation's needs. So we'd love for you to join as an Isology Hub member. Just head over to isologyhub.com to get access to your unlimited training and compliance resources. And uh, obviously, lifelong learner. <laughs> um, it'd be good to touch on what you'd say, you know, that you've learned from the experience of implementing 22301 so far. Yes. So for me, I think it's, it's how much people underestimate the importance of a good business impact analysis. After going through this in a very, very short space of time, I realised that it is actually the driving force behind a good business continuity management system. Without that, everything else is is just guesswork. And also how much people believe that business continuity, like you said, is all about IT or or physical assets. So originally it was, you know, people were talking about paper-based data or systems or, you know, IT systems. And then what they didn't realise or what they failed to realise was it's also about people. Because people can introduce the risks, you know, you can have single points of failure, which is, you know, where if somebody left, there would be a gap. And it was just, it was navigating through that, that has been, uh, yeah, I'd say best practice to consider everything. Okay, great. And I know it's only early days, but have you started to see any benefits from having that business continuity management system in place? Yeah, definitely. So I've noticed actually a lot of our clients have requested our business continuity plans. 
I'm not sure if they did before, but I'm definitely noticing it more now. And of course, it helps with your 2.7, definitely helps with the 2.7, especially with the standard change and the introduction of the new controls. I'm not worried about those, those extra controls now because I know that we've, we've got it covered in the 22301. Great. Yeah, so you found that it's helped with the transition to the new 27001, 2022 standard then by the sounds of it. Oh, definitely. Right. Okay. Well, that's good to hear, but I know it's still early days, isn't it? You know, in theory, you know, nobody wants a disaster within an organisation. Nobody really wants to invoke their business continuity plan. But I do hope that for whatever reason, there is some type of issue that, you know, the business continuity management system really does, you know, pay back in dividends. Mm. Okay. So in terms of the tips you'd like to share with somebody else, you know, if they were about to embark on this for the very first time, what top tip would you give to them if they're looking at implementing, it could be any ISO standard or just ISO 22301. That's up to you, Lauren. What, what kind of tips would you give them? I would definitely say give yourself longer than four months to implement a system. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that was a challenge, but um, yeah. But yeah, I think I think in general, looking at a management system, I, I think my key advice would be to logically think about how everything links together, because it does, especially for for the clauses. So for any clause, your management review can be your best friend. It can touch on multiple clauses. You can use it for your strategic objectives. You can use it for your business objectives. It's your opportunity to really engage with senior management and and help them understand what your risks are to the business, how your internal audit is coming along, how you manage your non-conformities. And and it can be all neatly wrapped up in that nice management review bow. And it costs a lot to hold the management review meetings in terms of resources. So I would say really get value out of it. So yeah, that would definitely be my top tip. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah, I really like your quote there. Your management review can be your best friend Mm -hmm. and get the most value out of it. I agree 100% there. I think, unfortunately, a lot of businesses just see management review as a tick box to meet, you know, another clause requirement within the standard instead of actually optimising the use of it and, you know, having the leadership team involved in actively making decisions on the performance of the business which ultimately that's what the standards come down to Mm. so yeah I think that's a brilliant tip thanks very much for that Lauren so yeah I think we're kind of drawing to an end now but um if you could gift a book to someone what would it be and why doesn't have to be standard related by the way don't worry (laughs) I thought about this quite a lot and um I think if I was going to gift somebody a book at the moment I think I would give them one of the most recent ones that I've read, which is the the Matthew Perry biography. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It sounds a bit random, but um, I think for me, because I grew up watching Friends, and it wasn't until I read his book that I realised how very sad his his life was. I mean, you know, he, he had all this success and, you know, he was always laughing, always joking. And actually the book portrayed a completely different story. Um, he had a lot of sort of abandonment issues from his childhood and it just portrayed how he had to handle that for the rest of his life. And it just, it really made me think about how you never really know what somebody's going through and how even if, if you can do anything just to be nice to people, because people always, they're their own worst critics all the time, you know? And I just think if you can be nice to people and you can try and make their day a little bit better by saying something or doing something, then, yeah, I think I think that people should. I know that sounds a bit. No, not at all. I I think, you know, giving that as a gift and just, you know, yeah, reinforcing the fact that that kindness does make a massive difference. You know, if everybody on the planet could be a little bit kinder to each other. I think the world would be quite a different place. So, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll check that one out. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And, and then finally, what's your favourite quote, you know, that you might like to leave our listeners with? 
Oh, my favourite quote of all time is that you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. <laughs> and essentially... I don't think I've heard that one before. No, not many people have. But I just, I like the way it sounds. You know, essentially we've all got jobs to do and, you know, life can be stressful. But I think that if, if you're nicer, and this goes back to the, the book as well, if you're nicer to people, it can make the world a better place. And you'll find that people respond better to kindness than they do to God. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's a, as applicable within the work environment and, and outside, isn't it? You know, in terms of, I'd say that when implementing it, so I'm just bringing this back to our sales standards because I'm a bit sad like that. <laughs> But if, let's say, you know, it could be a bit of a challenge for an organisation implementing an ISO standard from scratch. And, and especially, you know, in terms of business continuity, mm. you know, quite often that is at the bottom of the agenda. And it's only really, it only comes on, into its own when people actually have an incident. Mm. And the majority of businesses that come to us that want to implement ISO 22301 is either because they've had a major incident and it's cost the business a hell of a lot of money or it's generally a client requirement as well. Sometimes people don't necessarily want to make that change. So if you can be really nice to people and to be kind and to help them to see what the benefits are as well, it really does make a huge difference, I think. So, yeah, I'll, yeah. sorry for bringing that back to standards. No. But yeah, I agree with that as well. Yeah, I think when I was, when I was implementing the system, it really helped um, because obviously – everybody's really busy everybody has their their day job to do and it's quite difficult to engage people so I think just having that that friendly demeanor and explaining the value to people really helped with engaging everyone and not just saying you know this is extra work that you have to do on top of your day job just saying to them look here's the benefits that you're going to see these are these are the risks that we're going to mitigate and you know here's the efficiencies that we can bring to actually make your your work life a little bit easier if we can if you have a say for example a a single point of failure you know somebody in your team what can we do to help you alleviate that well you know we can put together processes we can we can maybe bring extra resource on board it adds that layer of um I don't know it just it adds that extra robustness if that makes sense you know we can help them by them helping us Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And that's what a good management system is all about, isn't it? Because it's a system for everybody. Yeah. It's not just a, a document that's sitting there. It's uh yeah, it's there to help improve the business and in one way or another. Definitely. Great. Well it's been a real pleasure speaking to you today, Lauren. Thank you so much for your time. No worries. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And best of luck with the stage two assessment. I think it sounds as though you know, based on all the work that you've put in so far, I'm I'm sure that's gonna go well in the coming weeks. Thank you. Thanks very much for listening to the ISO show. Um, If you've enjoyed listening to Lauren Taylor and I having a chat about ISO 22301 and uh, lifelong learners journey to achieving 22301, then please do leave us with a comment or if you don't want to miss any future episodes, we've got some episodes coming up on AI on the new artificial intelligence standards, then just click on subscribe. So that's all for now. And I look forward to catching up with you on the next ISO show. Looking to use ISO standards to drive better business practice? Contact us at blackmoorsuk.com to access further information and book your free 15-minute call.